Are guys willing to work hard enough to do the things that are expected of that program? When you're playing at this level, and when you're playing against a lot of good teams right now, maybe not as many great teams, but a lot of good teams. I mean, every night we go out, we're playing against somebody that can beat us. We're supposed to do the things to try to compete to win a championship, to try to compete to go to a Final Four. That's the way it is. That's what you signed up for. Being a Spartan, to me, means caring about the person next to you, um, willing to go through the wall for your, your teammate, for the person to the left and to the right of you. And I think that's something that uh, we really embrace here. I think every team takes on the personality of his coach, and this coach is taking on the personality of being a Spartan in this place. Being a Spartan to me means just bringing toughness and passion to the game of basketball every single day. I, uh, you know, just loved the the memories of the 66 football team. I was old enough, you know, at 10 years old to watch uh, those games. I, I heard about Biggie and Duffy. I, you know, then moved into watching Judd and, and the things he accomplished and even got a chance to play against Gus Kanakis' teams a few times. And, you know, and then coming down here and watching George Perlis grow our football team and uh, Ron Mason, our hockey, and. And now, since, since Mark Hollis has taken over, um, I think the job he's done uh, with the Olympic or non-revenue sports has been incredible. You know, we've had incredible growth in that area along with just monster growth in our football. Um, it, it gives me great pride to, be, to think that I've been a part of all those different changes and new buildings and new fields. And, and new things that uh, that make it so special. Uh, Spartan means everything. I mean, I have green blood. I, I can I could talk all night about what it means to me. Um, I, I, I bleed green. I, I love coming back and being part of the program and, and helping the young guys out. And um, you know, Spartan Nation, the fans, the alumni have been great to me over my career. So I have a lot to be thankful for. And um, you know, I, I have to give a lot back to Michigan State. I, I think there's nothing better than being a Spartan. The, the camaraderie amongst uh, the former players, the current players. Uh, you know, when we all get together, it, it's like we all play together. And uh, even though we played in different eras, I think there's a brotherhood here that uh, is like no other. And uh, I think being a, becoming a Spartan uh, was one of the best decisions I ever made. And uh, it continues to, to give back to me. Uh, now I'm able to work here and, and be part of the staff uh, with Coach Izzo and uh, there's nothing like it. It's, just, it's, it's special to me, it always will be. Being a Spartan to me means, you know, just giving your all at all times, you know, um, being tough, you know, giving your full effort all the time, you know, that's what Spartan history has been about is winning, you know, being tough and giving full effort. Probably the greatest thing I enjoy about being a Spartan is going on the road, going to alumni events, and just seeing how passionate these alums are, uh, whether we're in California or Germany, whether we're in Florida or, you know, New York, it doesn't really matter where we are. Um, the passion, excitement, or to play in some of those great events that I've gotten a chance to play in and getting letters from people in, you know, Japan and in Korea and, you know, uh, Hawaii. I mean, it's Australia, it's, it's, it's incredible the scope of what we do. You know, being a Spartan, it, it means a lot. Um, you know, just the people here are great, uh, you know, coaches and, you know, my, my teammates are here are great. So, you know, I love being a Spartan. It's, you know, best, the best decision I've ever made. I feel like my job is to honor every one of those alums. I think it's a blue collar place that, um, and I'm a blue collar guy. I, I love to walk the campus and see the people that um, make up this place. And uh, I guess that's why I never want to leave. Well, halfway through the Big Ten season, I, I, I see some good things. I see some things that I'm not real pleased with right now. And uh, I say that only because what every coach wants is consistency. And I don't think we've been as consistent as I would like. And a lot of that is relying maybe more on our jump shot than we have in the past. But some of it, too, is the league. The league is 
you know, every team's got the same thing going. You know, it's it's had some 20-point wins and it's had some 15-point losses. We'd like to have uh, one or two more wins, but uh, we feel like we've come out and, uh, you know, played pretty good. Well, Brandon Dawson's uh, consistency is the best of his career by far. I mean, he's doing something that few have done in this league, averaging almost 12 rebounds a game in league play. Uh, I don't think that's been done in many, many years. And and he's still getting 13 and a half points a game, not shooting as well from the free throw line, but he's working on it morning, noon, and night. If he was doing that, it'd be 15, 16 points, 12 rebounds. He'd be having a uh, an MVP type year. And uh, so the consistency there has been great because he's also one of our best defensive players. You know, Denzel had a great game the last game, shot the ball well. And, but he and Travis haven't shot it like they did early in the year. For two guys that work on it so hard, spend so much time with it, I feel comfortable it's going to come back. And when it does, um, we're going to be a much better team. We've still had some problems getting Javon Best back, who I think is really important to this team. A little more consistency out of Gavin Schilling around the basket. And and then see what we can do, uh, you know, between Elvin Ellis and, and some of those other subs, you know, like Tom Tom and... Marvin Clark, are those guys going to step up and do a little bit more? Uh, we got a chance, hopefully, to we can get on a roll here and maybe uh, push our way towards the top of the, the league. Uh, but it's going to be tough. It's hard to predict and, and understand exactly what happens. It's never apples to apples, as you say. There's crazy things that go on in the league. But what you got to do is try to control what you can control. We can control shooting the ball from the free throw line better, I think. We can control mental mistakes a little better than we have. And night in, night out, uh, you see this has been a weird league. Uh, they're 20 point swings. A team wins by 20 at home, goes on the road and loses by 20. Not that you want to be like everyone else, but uh, that's what we're all going through right now. So I'm trying to keep it all in perspective, stay the course that we're doing, trying to get our defense to be better and better. But probably the biggest thing we got to do is continue to work on our shooting get that better and uh, if we shoot the ball well I think we're defending and rebounding good enough to make a run here at the stretch run but we got some tough games coming up. As you've even seen this year I mean there's kind of like a, a jam up in that second place everybody's tied and you look around and a lot of people have three losses already and um, I think that just shows the strength of our, our of our conference and that anybody can get beat any night. There's certain teams that fare better against others so, uh, you know, with the exception of Wisconsin, we were all kind of clumped right in there. And I think uh, the next four or five games, we'll start to see some separation and hopefully uh, we're on the positive side of that. This team has a higher ceiling that we can reach. I know that. How high it is, I'm a little confused on because of the conference, because of how we've played at times. But I, I think when we are shooting the ball well, it helps our defense. And... Uh, we got a lot of positive things to look forward to here in the next uh, nine games. And, you know, we can always get better, but um, we're just going to have to make changes. That's the that's the good thing about it is, I mean, you look at how the how the conference is really spacing out right now, and we're right where we need to be, honestly. Um, and we control our own destiny, like you said. Um, it's it's up to us. I've had a great scout teams over the years, but I think this one might be one of the best we've had. Uh, you know, it's led by Aaron Harris, our transfer, who's been phenomenal, but Kobe Willman has, has been great too. And we just have a group of guys that uh, have taken their role to the max. Well, you know, I, obviously scout team, we're responsible for, uh, for, for learning kind of the tendencies and the plays of, of whatever team we're playing. It's one of the most important things we do, and uh, we value what those guys do on a day-in, day-out basis uh, because we feel that we're one of the uh, better prepared teams uh, in the country. They don't get a lot of praise. They're kind of the unsung heroes. They come in and, and uh, ideally they replicate the other team's offense and in, in some cases their defense. Well, the way I look at it, that's my part on the team. I, do my best to give them the best look they can see for the other team's plays, their uh, tendencies, how they play the game. They give us a great look at what the, the opposing team does, and uh, a lot of times, sometimes they're, they're better than the opposing team in terms of running their stuff. You know, they need the best look they can get to be able to go on the floor and kind of imitate that, so we have to do the best job of imitating the team that we're about to play. 
And um, so that's that's a very important job that we have on our shoulders. They, they do a great job of preparing us. Um, you know, we, we have a lot of good guys on the scout team. And you got some talented guys on the team. You know, a guy like Aaron Harris, uh, Kobe Wallman, who gets minutes with us this year, uh, Kenny Goins, uh, Keenan Wetzel, guys like that. Um, that have actually played for us. And I mean, some of those guys are gonna play next year a lot. So uh, it's a really talented scout team and they don't get the credit they deserve. You know, for anyone that's come and watch practice, they know that you know, our scout team is pretty competitive with, with our, our regular guys. And um, you know, it's not like we go out there and you know, they're beating up on us the whole time. It's, uh, we, got some, we got some pretty good talent on there. Now we got Aaron Harris on there too, who's probably one of the more talented guys on our team. We got a lot of guys that, um, we got some guys on our team, other scout team that do play, some guys that will play a lot in the future. So you know, we got a we got a pretty complete scout team this year. I think for them it is fun because you get to, you know, uh, I think Aaron Harris is a great example of someone that gets to do a little bit more uh, because he's playing the, the best player on the other team a lot of times. Or you know, Colby Wallman's getting a chance to put the ball on the floor, or shoot some threes, and. You know, Keenan Wetzel, a very good three-point shooter. Uh, those guys get to play the best players in our league, and uh, for them it's fun. But at the same time, they're, they're giving our guys a great look uh, at what's coming up. I try and adapt each week to what, our, what the other team is going to do, to what the person I'm imitating really, what they're going to do, uh, just so they can get the best feel going into the game, and that's, that's my job for now. We do it for every single game. We're always there you know, 30, 45 minutes before everybody else gets to, to practice and learn plays and watch film on, on them um, to learn their tendencies, learn kind of how we're, how we're playing that week, what we could, whether we go right, whether we go left, whether we shoot, whether we don't. They pay the price. They, they pay the price from the standpoint that physically it's quite demanding because much of the time they're running the opponent's offense, but then they've got to go on defense too. And, uh, you know, we don't have a lot of subs for the practice squad. I think that that, that kind of consistent thing throughout our scout team is um, all the guys are, are committed, they're disciplined, they're, you know, they're, um, you, you can count on them, they're accountable. So um, it, it, makes for a, it makes for a pretty good scout team. They do a good job of preparing us and um, at a very high level, and we like to compete with them. All in all, they're, they're awesome kids, they're fun to be around, they're, they're totally part of this team, they're all in, and, and some, it's a case where they, you know, die to be Spartans. Good scout team does make you a better team. This this group has done an incredible job. Sometimes I think the best way to, to learn the other team's stuff is to run it yourself. And uh, I think that's why Kobe's able to make the transition from maybe not getting a ton of defensive reps to um, you know, being able to understand what the other team is running or, you know, what they're looking for. Well, Kobe's a special kid, much less a special player. You know, he's going into medical school when he's done here, and he's, uh, he's just an incredible student. And he's got a great perspective on our team. He's a guy I go to. I pull him in on the side and say, Kobe, what do you see? What do you think? How do you think we can help this player? So. Yeah, he doesn't get enough reps, and sometimes that hurts him when he plays, but he's so smart, he picks up things because he's playing on the scout team, studying film of whatever team, Illinois this week, that we're playing. You know, it actually helps a lot for me because um, I'm learning their plays, um, and that helps me guard them too, you know, because I, I, I probably know the plays by the time we're done better than, better than a lot of the guys that, that watch just watch film and guard them. Um, you know, it's a little tricky because you've got to translate running it offensively into how we're going to guard it defensively, but um, luckily I've been around the program long enough to, to know our kind of our defensive system and how we're going to guard things, so I can usually, uh, I can usually figure it out from there. But, you know, it, it's, it's got its advantages and its drawbacks. Um, where guys um, get the ability and are afforded the ability to play on the scout team and, and get their, and a lot of times guys get their confidence up. Right now we've got Aaron Harris, who obviously is redshirting this year. Uh, he's learning to play point guard, playing a lot of point guard for our scout team. And, and so he's really learning the position. I think most importantly, he's learning how to communicate with his teammates. Uh, I've been working on my ball handling skills, um, just working on handling the ball under pressure, um, working on going, you know, going hard, but also keeping my keeping patient as I handle the ball, making the right decisions. You know, getting back in a, a point guard state of mind, which I haven't been in in years. Um, been working on talking to my teammates, 
uh, like I said, than just trying to become a better leader on the floor, but both vocal leader and example leader. It can help all of them get better uh, going against the competitive defense and trying to improve their game uh, themselves. The, the, the great ones get a lot out of that red shirt year or the year on the scout team. Uh, guys that don't are missing an opportunity. Uh, my role on the practice squad is to get the main players better, uh, get the players around me better, practice my leadership skills, um, also get myself better, just to go hard every day, get myself better, but you know, that's something I don't have to think about, just, just, just going hard, it's just in me. With the confidence, that, that is an instant con confidence booster, and I definitely need that in this year for trying to go into next year and seeing where I'm at in the playing group next year, but this year is all about me getting better, getting stronger, trusting myself more, and trying to get others to trust me more around me. Kenny Goings right now is, is, does a lot of scout team for us, and, and most likely a red shirt, but uh, I think that's one great advantage that we have and, and something that we have at this school. Uh, it definitely gives you a lot of confidence in just uh, your ability to score, defend, because I'm going against the best players on my team as well as trying to imitate the game of other players on the best players on the other team. So I get to try and pick up these different moves that they're using while also trying to work on my defense, guarding Brandon Dawson, Denzel, like the best players on our team. So to be able to imitate and compete with the best players, uh, you definitely get a sense that um, you you can make it here. and. Um, definitely just raises your confidence to the next level, knocking down shots. We guard them every day also, so I've been working on my defensive ability. You know, that's something I have to work on if I want to go to the next level, so I've been working hard on that too. Aaron definitely prepares you, not only uh, for the game at hand, but I mean, just to become a better player. Um, he's one of the most talented guys I've been around, um, and I think he's going to do, he's going to do great next year. I can't speak enough about the job Kobe's done and Aaron too, but uh, all of them have done a phenomenal job. Today, Lupe Izzo will chair the MSU Rebounders Club Annual Food Drive. If you're on your way into the Breslin Center right now, make sure you come ready to donate and make the MSU Rebounders Club Annual Food Drive a success. Spartan fans are encouraged to bring commercially packaged, non-perishable food items and cash donations to the game. Um, what we want to do is be able to raise money and get cans so that we have even better um, resources so we can supply our clients with what they need. 100% of all contributions will go to the MSU Student Food Bank and the Greater Lansing Food Bank. As a student myself, I know how hard it can be, so uh, I think it's really important to be able to help people out who are need. Every $100 collected purchases 222 pounds of food. Most of us have so much to be thankful for, and helping some that don't have that advantage would be uh, phenomenal. Donations to the food bank. Oh, yeah. Donations? Yeah. Yeah, I can grab those. Like, okay, Thank you, David. It's an early game today here in the Breslin Center, but it's a big game. It's Michigan State, it's Illinois and a matchup between two schools that have played some great games of late, and they have been a lot of them really, really tight. Tip up and controlled by, as always, Michigan State. The jump ball goes down to start the game for Denzel Valentine. Another Illinois turnover. Here comes Trice with numbers. He'll do it himself. Morgan allowed the flyby, but then missed the bunny and knocked it out of bounds. Hacking it down from the corner is Ellis. Two for 11 all year. It's in early, knocks in a three. That is the time is away. They, they, their hands, they have great hands. Lost it out of bounds, though. Tate has it. Being guarded by Valentine. Cut off in the lane. Now it comes out over the hill. A long three. Good, and he's fouled.
Well, the nice over-the-top pass there by Gavin Schilling found Forbes wide open in the corner. With the ball now, none. He's working on Forbes. The lefty goal fires. What a block by Dawson. Ball comes into Tum Tum there. Eight seconds. Tom is dribbling around. Now to Forbes for a three. He got it! Wow, what a shot! There's the lob, and this time, no mistake, Brandon Dawson throws it down. Costello, Matt making a move. Left-handed hook shot, oh, it pops out, tip Dawson, yes! Dawson cancel a skip pass to Trice for three. He got it! How about that? We got a one-point game! Valentine, he's dribbling, he's in the paint. He stops, he throws it to the basket. No, he missed everything but glass. So, Michigan State's gonna come up a little short on this one. Final score for Mace Lansing, Illinois 59, and Michigan State has 54. You know, we just, um, you know, towards the end, you know, end of the game, um, you know, we just have to really, uh, you know, come together as a team. Um, you know, we, you know, we, we didn't shoot, you know, well from free throw line, and I think, you know, that's what, that's what really, you know, cost us tonight.